Hello and welcome. You are now looking at S2 Member. An S2 Member is a way of protecting your content when you want to deliver it through a membership and WordPress. S2 Member integrates with JVZoo and it allows you to create a membership or to sell one-off products. So we are going to show you how to set up an S2 Member website within your WordPress installation. Thanks and I'll see you in the first video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video we are going to find S2 member and we're going to go ahead and download it to our hard drive. So in order to do that you'll just need to go to a search engine like Google and then just type in S2 member and then plug in and then click enter. You should see at the top of the search results or very close a line that says S2 member, a powerful free membership plugin for WordPress. You want to go ahead and click that link. What you're going to notice then is that it has several layers to the website. What you want to do is you want to find the framework 100% free of charge. Now obviously you can upgrade to the pro version or the unlimited site license but for this particular case we're just going to go ahead and download the framework. They're going to ask you for your name and email address so you're going to want to go ahead and put that in. S2 member is going to ask you for a primary domain, so you want to go ahead and put that in. Okay, once you do that, then S2 member is going to ask you to log in, so you want to use your login credentials there. And you'll type in the username or password. Once you've typed in, you want to click login. And then S2 member is going to give you access to the latest edition and all you want to do is you want to download that to your hard drive and once you download S2 member you are now ready to use it in your WordPress installation. Now there's one other way for you to get the S2 member program and that's from inside of WordPress and I'll show you that right now. Once you have logged into your WordPress installation, you are going to go to the plugins area and click add new. When you get there, you're going to search plugins and you're going to write in S2 member. And then you'll just go to this area to find the plugin. And you'll want to write it so that it is all one word and then you'll see it right there. You can check out the details and it's just as if you'll be on the site. And actually once you're here you can actually go to the next step and go ahead and install it. Now that is what we'll be doing in the next video. Okay so with that thanks and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now we are now in the dashboard area of our WordPress installation and we are now going to install the WordPress plugin S2 member. And so in order to do that, we're just going to go to the plugins area. We're going to click add new. And then we're going to click upload plugin. And in order to do this, we're going to go and grab that file from our hard drive. Okay, once we have that file, what we can do is just click the install now button. And then you'll notice the message from WordPress saying that the plugin has been installed successfully. You want to click activate plugin. Once you've done that, you should see the S2 member framework inside of your WordPress installation. Now, of course, you can install in the way that we suggested in the other video that we talked about getting S2 member. In that particular case, you would go to add a new plugin. And then you would type in the search plugins area S2 member. When you do that, you're actually going to search. And you'll see the S2 member framework probably in the top left hand corner. Now you'll get the opportunity to click the install button from there. Now ours won't show because we've actually already installed the plugin. 
But if you'd like to do it that way, you can certainly do it that way. Either way gets the plugin onto your site and makes it ready to be used. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I'll see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to start the setup of S2 member from the dashboard. And we're going to be going through several things, and we want to kind of give you an overview of what those things are going to be. We are going to set up the general settings, and you'll see that here in a minute. We'll go inside of S2 member, and we will be configuring basic settings for you to be able to sell your membership on JVZoo. We will put together registration settings so that your user can be registered when they buy or register when they are signed up. We're also going to put together login settings so that your user will be able to come to your site and log in to get their content whenever they buy something from within your site. We're going to put together your login welcome page, which is basically a group of settings inside of S2 Member. We're also going to put together your membership options page, and this is where people who may or may not have direct access to a certain product or a certain grouping of products, this is where they're going to be sent, where they can sign up in order to get them. Your membership options page will have your buy buttons and everything that you are offering to the customer. We're going to look at restriction options, where you are going to be able to give your buyers certain access to certain content and to be able to restrict them when you don't want them to have access to other kinds of content. So we'll talk about that. And then lastly, we will talk about user management. So if you ever want to add a user to a particular product or to a particular membership, we will be showing you how to do that when we actually get to that part of the setup. So that's an overview of what we'll be discussing in these next few videos. We will see you in the next one where we start the setup inside the dashboard of S2 Member. Welcome back. Now to get started with the setup, we are going to go to your left side menu and we're going to go inside of S2 member and we're going to go to the general options link. When we get there, you're going to see several things and we're going to start with the top menu and most of these things are going to be pretty fast and we're going to leave the default settings. For example, we're going to leave the plugin deletion safeguards. And this is actually more conservative, so you don't lose all your data. We are also going to look at the security encryption key. And what this does is it keeps your members' information secure. And what you'll need to do is you'll need to auto-generate a security key by clicking this link. And once you get this link, you are going to want to write down this information or to put it in a secure location in case anything happens to your WordPress location. And so in this particular case, if you have a password saver, such as RoboForm or LastPass or OnePass, you can then take that number and put it inside there. So we're going to do that right now. Okay, assuming you have saved your key, we're going to go to the next section. Now, this is something that most marketers will probably not be dealing with, but you do want to run this by your hosting company to find out if this is something that you have to do. But in most cases, you will not. Okay, the same is true for the CSS loading. And in general, you will just want to leave this the way it is. And then we can close that one up. And then we will then look at the S2 member security badge. And the S2 member security badge will allow you to put a badge on your site. Kind of like looks like the one that I'm hovering over right now that says that your site is secured by S2 member. And this is a personal choice. This is something that you don't have to do. It will not necessarily affect how you run your membership. So if this is something that you choose to do, you can certainly do that by following the instructions here. We are not going to go through that process. We want to do what is necessary to get our site up and running with JVZoo. So we're gonna close that up right now. And then we are going to take a look at the email configuration. You will want to make sure that your email is specific to how you want people to see what it is that you are sending them. And so if you are branding based on your membership, you want to make sure that all this information is according to your brand. Now, the other thing that you'll want to think about is configuring the new user email. Now, this is once again something that you don't have to do, but if you have a specialized membership, you will want to consider looking at the customization by clicking yes, 
and then clicking this new user message so that this will determine how the message is seen once it comes to the user. We're now going to answer questions about whether or not we want open registration since this is a paid membership. We do not want open membership so that people can come and register anytime they want to become part of our site. So we're going to leave that as no open registration. Now in terms of membership levels, S2 member has some default levels in there. Level zero is a free subscriber, but of course you can change the names of all of these subscribers to be what you want them to be. We're gonna leave these categories in place as they do not affect our membership. Now, you do have a choice as to whether or not you wanna force WordPress to use your labels. The default setting is going to be no, and we're gonna leave it at that. Now, next is the login page and the login design. You're then gonna come into the login and registration design, and you are going to see some things that you can change, but once again, None of this is really going to keep you from being able to set up your membership. Now, there are some options for you to be able to customize. In particular, you are going to be able to customize the background image where people log in. So you are going to want to place this image in your background image. If you want to change that and all you need is URL for that image, you can also change your logo image and you'll be able to do that once again by placing it in this area. Now, if you are adept at HTML and you want to change some of the background colors as well as the fonts, you can change them. However, none of those things will keep you from being able to set up your membership quickly with JVZoo. Now, in particular, um, one of the things that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that your logo image has a title attribution um, you can change that to whatever your brand is in this area. And then if you want to have a display link at the bottom back to your home page, um, you can do that. Otherwise, you can leave the default setting. And with that, once we're done with that, we can close up the login and registration design, and we can go to the registration profile and fields. Once again, unless you really have a need for custom fields, you're probably not going to use this in order to set up a simple membership with uh, JVZoo. Uh, this is, again, something extra and it's a little advanced. So it's one of those things that if you're going to set up your payment processor with someone other than JVZoo, you can use this. Otherwise, we are going to leave that one alone. The login and welcome page. Now, this is where we'll want to create a page, and this is going to be the first page that people see when they log into your website, and you'll need to choose that page here in this area. Now, you probably do not have a page set up already, so what we're going to do is we're going to go and set up a page right now. And to do that, all we're going to do is we're going to right-click, and we're going to open this Pages tab in a new tab. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add in a new page. And then you'll call this page something like, Welcome to our membership area. And when you're done there, you'll click Publish. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back here. And we'll probably need to refresh this page so that we can find it. We'll come back to the Login Welcome Page area. And then we'll make our Login Welcome Page Welcome to My Membership Area. These other two settings can be left as default, once again, unless you have a compelling need to do it. And we're going to close up the login welcome page. We're now going to go to the membership options page. And once again, this page is going to be one where people are going to come. And once again, this is going to be a page that people are going to be sent to where they can find out about all of the membership options that they are able to purchase. So if they hit a page that they're not supposed to be on, they'll be sent to this page where they can actually buy access to the membership. Now, we'll actually need to go and create this page just as we did the last one. So we can literally go back to the tab that we have open and click Add New. And then we can write in here Membership Options. Now we can always come back and change the name of this page, but we do need to have one available. We're going to click Publish and then your membership option page is available. We're gonna come back to this page and we're gonna refresh. And then we're going to open up the membership options tab 
and then we're going to set the new page as our membership options. We're going to leave this default setting available and then we're going to click close. Now in terms of the membership profile modifications, we probably won't need to do that. We don't want to give people uh, the ability to change their default profile. We're going to use them as they are. And again, we're just going to work with the profiles in the default settings. And then we're going to go to the URL shortening preference. And a membership always produces fairly long URLs. Some of them are kind of ugly and what will happen is uh, S2 member will automatically assign a link shortening service and they use tiny URL and of course if you want to use a different one you can but tiny URL is free and you can definitely use it inside of your membership and once you've completed all the general options all you need to do is click save all changes and you have now completed all of the membership options and with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Now, one thing that we need to do for our membership is to give our users a place to log in, regardless of where they are on our site. And the way that we are going to do that is to install a sidebar login plugin. And we're going to go to the Add New Plugins. And when we get there, we're going to type in Sidebar Login. We're going to hit enter and it's going to actually search and you're going to see the sidebar login right here with the most installs and you're just going to click install. Once you've done that, you want to click activate. And then on every page that you have, you will actually have a place for your users to log in wherever they are. Now, in order to get the sidebar login to show we're going to need to go into the appearance and then we're going to need to go into our widget section and then what we're going to do is we're going to get the sidebar login box and we're going to drag it into the sidebar and then WordPress will give you some customization you can pretty much leave this as the default and then you're going to click save Now what's going to happen is that every page that you have in your membership and on your site is going to have a sidebar login. And so we're going to go and look at one right now. We're just going to go to the front page here. And then we're going to find one out of our pages. And you're going to notice our sidebar login. We can log out. We can take a look at our profile and then we can go straight to the dashboard and this is actually what our customer is going to see. Obviously, this has been made over for the theme that we're using as yours will be made over for the theme that you'll be using. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to be working with our user management settings as well as our restriction options. So to start with the user management, you'll simply need to go to the users area. And what you'll notice if you want to add a member to your S2 member membership is that you will just click add new as you normally do. You'll be required to give your customer a username as well as an email. And we're just going to enter one in here now. Okay, and once we've written this in, then we want to give our user a role and this is where we'll choose the S2 member level that our user is going to be on. If we're going to be on level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4, you'll go ahead and write that in. So in this particular case, the user we're going to be adding is going to be on level 1. Now when we do that, we want to make sure that our user is going to be sent a new email about their account and then we'll click add new user. Then once we've done that, what we've done is we've added someone to the first level of products inside of WordPress. Now, one of the reasons that's going to be important is the next thing that we're going to be showing you, and that is the page restriction area. You may have a case where some of the content you have on a specific post, you want to restrict that content. And let's just put some practice content here. 
So we have placed our practice content and in order to restrict this post, S2 member will give us a window right here above the publish box that will allow us to restrict this only to level one or higher. Now that means that the only customers that can get access to this content will be those who are at least at level one and we can restrict access to certain posts based on the membership site that people are going to be a part of. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. You are now looking at JVZoo and now in order to set up your account, in order to start selling products, you are going to want to pick the side that says become a JVZoo seller. And once you do that, then you will be going through an application process. When you get to the registration page, you will put in a name and email address and all of these other things. You are going to need to go through a phone verification process. You're going to need to agree to the terms of service. You're going to have to make sure to set up your taxing information. And once you do that, you're going to register and then you will be set up with an account on JVZoo that you'll be connecting to your PayPal account. Now once you are set up with your PayPal account, you will then want to go to the seller's dashboard area. And then once you do that, what you're going to do is you're going to click add a product. And then most of this you're going to want to go through. Now in order to start with until your product is ready to launch, you're going to click no for the marketplace. When your product goes live, then you'll click yes to the marketplace. But for now we're going to say no. And we're going to give our product a name. We're going to give it a price. We are even going to decide how much we're going to give affiliates, typically 50% or above. Uh, if we're going to have a limited number of spots in the membership, then we will limit that number in the quantity area. We're going to put a support email address. And if you have a support site set up, you're going to want to go ahead and put in your support URL and you'll put that in there. The landing page or sales funnel or squeeze page, this is if you're going to do a pre-launch campaign. In this particular case, we're going to keep this launch simple and we're just going to do our sales page. And we're going to have our sales page at this URL. Now, obviously, at this point, we have not yet gone through writing the sales letter. However, when you do write a sales letter, you are going to put it in this URL. To pass the affiliate ID to the sales page, this will allow you to help your affiliates uh, to know that they are getting credit. And then for the delivery method, you are going to want to put in a thank you page. And then what you'll do is you'll put in a page where people are going to get instructions to check their email address for their login and password. Now, if you are competing for a product of the day on JVZoo, now, what you're agreeing to here is also that your customers are going to get emails from JVZoo. So if you don't want to compete for the product of the day, you're going to leave that unchecked. If you do, you can leave it checked. Typically, you're going to leave this as a manual approval. You typically want to know who your affiliates are and you want to know how they're going to promote. Now, anything in particular that you'll want to say to the affiliates, you'll write it in here. Now, in this space, you can actually put in an HTML-based web page to give your affiliates more instruction. And in these two spaces, you can communicate messages to your customer. And in terms of the custom email receipt, now in terms of the custom email receipt information, what you're going to do is you're going to write a message telling people that they're going to be getting their login and password from another email and not from the JVZoo email. Sometimes people will look at their JVZoo email and they will make the association that that's their login and password when really, when really your system or S2 member is going to send them an email with their login and password. Now one of the last things you're going to do is to put your PayPal information in there. If you want to integrate an autoresponder specifically, you can integrate the following autoresponders. Aweber, Inimica Mail, SendReach, and these autoresponders will allow you to be able to have your buyer placed on a buyer's list as soon as they make the purchase to get your buyers onto an email marketing list. Now, the other thing you want to consider here is the webinar integration. If you have GoToWebinar, you can have people automatically placed on a webinar. You can actually 
do retargeting for those people who come to a specific page. And because we're going to be working with S2 member, we are going to come back in a separate video and we're going to connect our S2 member to this area, the external program integration. And what this will do is this will mean then that when your buyer makes a purchase, they're going to be placed inside of the membership on the site where we are creating our S2 member membership. Okay, so those are the basics in terms of product creation. And then when you have completed this, everything except for this area, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and click save and then your product is going to be available. Now, when you first start, if this is your first time creating a product, you are going to have to get JVZoo approval for your product. You'll need to go to the support area and then request that they review your product for their platform. The other thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to grab buy buttons, but we will be doing that in another video. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now, in this video, we are going to be connecting our JVZoo account with our S2 member installation. Now, we'll need to go back inside of the product that we created. And then we'll need to scroll down to the bottom and then we'll need to go to external program integration. We'll need to skip down to the bottom and you're going to notice an area here called method for S2 member integration. And JVZoo tells you exactly what to do and we're going to follow those instructions to the letter. We're going to first go to S2 member, PayPal options, then PayPal integration. So once we've clicked S2 member, we'll then go to PayPal options. That will bring us to this page and then we'll click the PayPal IPN integration. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the optional third party integrations. And then what we're going to do is we are going to grab this link. We're going to copy it. And then we're going to head back to JVZoo. Once we get there, we're going to put that link in this top folder. Now, one of the things that we're going to want to do is you'll notice that JVZoo tells us to be sure to replace this part of the phrase that says proxy gateway in the URL to something else custom that says JVZoo. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to take our arrow key. We're going to find that area. And then we're going to delete it. And we're going to write in JVZoo. And the PayPal IPN integration also gives us some additional data we need to put into the custom field. And you'll see that right here in this area. And you'll just need to copy this or you can just remember it. We're just going to copy and paste that. And then we're going to go back to JVZoo. And when we go back to JVZoo, we're just going to put that information right inside of the custom field. We're also going to put in here the S2 member user level that we're going to be putting people into our membership on. And since this is our first product, we're going to use level one. And we're going to just put the number one in there. So if you wanted to see what that corresponds to inside of S2 member, let's take a look. If you recall in the general options area of S2 member, we had a space called membership levels. And you remember that there was level one, two, three, four. We're going to use the first level, which is level one. And all we have to do is remember the one in this case. So as we go back to JVZoo, We'll just put the number one in here. And now that we have everything in, we're going to click save. And now our site is ready to start taking payments once we are approved and we place our buy buttons in a position for others to buy. Okay, so with that, thanks. And I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, what we are going to do is we are going to upload the files that you're going to be serving in your membership to your S2 member installation. Now, in order to do that, S2 member has a certain way that you can actually do that. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. 
Now the file that you'll be uploading to will have your domain and directory.com. So if you have a, if you have a subdirectory after that, it'll go here. You'll be looking for the WP content folder. Then you'll be looking for the plugin folder. You'll click inside of there. And then you'll be looking for a folder called S2 member files. That is the place where you're going to be uploading all of the downloads that you're going to be putting in for people to be able to get access to when you give them links inside of your S2 member installation. Now I'm going to show you the form that you're going to use whenever you create a download. So once you've uploaded the file to that directory, every download is going to take the following format. You're going to have the URL, you're going to have the directory where the membership is, and then you're going to have a question mark, and then you're going to have the words S2 member file with the underscore there download equal now after the equal sign is going to be the name of the file so in this particular case we named it example file you would actually have your actual file name there when you created this download link so if we have a file here what we would do is we would make sure that our file is going to be zipped up so we would send that to a compressed file so however you create zip files, that's what you're going to do. We like to eliminate the spaces in here, so we're going to call this bonus-worksheet. And so now we have our zip file, and it is now ready to be uploaded. So now what we need to do is we need to find the FTP location of where we're going to be delivering the file. We already have that, so we're going to pull open FileZilla right now so that we can upload our file using the drag-and-drop system. And you'll notice that we have our directory open. If you recall, there's our directory, there's WP content. We clicked into the plugins folder, clicked into S2 member files, and now we're in this directory. So that all we have to do now is upload the file by dragging and dropping. And so now that folder is now on our server and it's called bonus-worksheet. So now what we need to do is we need to name this link according to the convention that we talked about a minute ago. So if you recall, we said that we needed to name the file according to our URL, according to that directory, with these words, and then instead of example file, well, we're going to put in the name of our file. So now what we have here is we have the file and it is ready to be uploaded using bonus-worksheet instead of example file. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this and then we're going to head into our WordPress installation and we're now going to open a post where we're going to deliver the content. So we're going to add a new post. And in this particular case, for example, we might call this June content. And what we would do, of course, is we would create a link for our customers to make sure that they get it. And so we might write in bonus worksheet. We would then create a hyperlink. So we go here and highlight and place in our URL. We then click enter and then we would publish the post. Now as we talked about earlier, the only people that we would want to see this post would be the people who are going to be in level one. So we would then update this post And now what we've done is we've protected on two levels. First, the only people who are going to see this post are going to be the people who were part of the level one membership. The other thing is that this download is going to be in a protected folder. And so the only people that are going to be able to download are going to be people who are going to be part of your actual membership. So we have now created content for our membership. We have linked to it inside of the protected folder. And we have now protected the post with our member level. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we're going to be talking about dripping content if you are not going to be upgrading to the S2 Member Pro plugin. 
Now S2 member obviously has a paid version. Now S2 member obviously has a paid version and that paid version comes with the ability for you to be able to drip or to be able to time release content. Now that may not be an option or, or that may not be something that you like to do. So we're gonna be talking about a workaround in this video. Now, one of the things you're going to want to consider doing is to discourage the search engines from indexing the site. That means that the pages that you're going to be creating are not going to be indexed by the search engines and it's not going to be easy for anyone to just go and find or guess where the pages are going to be before their time releases their content. So then once you've done that, you're going to want to click Save Changes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to either your post or your page. So wherever you're going to be delivering your content, if you're going to be delivering it on posts or pages, you want to go to that area. So let's act as if you are going to be delivering all of your content by post. So we're going to go to the all post area. Now what we're going to be doing is if we're going to start delivering content on a once a month basis, we're going to have a naming convention as such. So we're going to name the first month's content we're going to name the first month's content month one. And then we're going to hit publish. And we're also going to protect that by level one. So you'll notice there that we have the first three months completed. And that's all that we'll need in order to set the example of what you're going to be doing in order to drip content. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to your permalinks and you're going to go into the settings area and you're going to go to the permalinks. Now, you're not going to want to use any of the date related permalink settings. You are going to want to use the post name. And we're going to click save changes. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our posting area. And we're going to take a look at all of our posts and now we're going to name each one of these uniquely. So we're going to click month one and we're going to call that something unique based on the content. For example, month one could be CPA marketing. And what you're going to do is you're going to rename this link now also. And you want to consider doing something a little unique and you may want to append that with a number that only means something to you but that your customers will not be able to guess. And then you're going to do the same thing in the other posts. We're going to click update and we're going to go back to the other post and do the same thing. Okay, so we've done the same thing for month two. We're going to click update. And we're going to do the same thing for month three. So now we've done the same with month three. We have the marketing statistical data post. So in order to get the people who are going to be signing up for their monthly content in an autoresponder, you're going to want them to go to the welcome to the membership page. And so we'll go back to there now. You'll recall that this is the page that people are going to be sent to as soon as they log in. So we're going to edit this page. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put an opt-in form on this page so that people will know that they need to sign up in order to get their monthly content on time every month. So what we're going to do is we're going to click text and then we're going to get an opt-in code from our autoresponder. In this particular case, we're going to go to get response and get an autoresponder code. Okay, so hopefully you already know how to create a web form inside of your autoresponder. We're not going to do that right now. We're just going to show you what to do with the web form. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the actual HTML form. And then we are going to save and publish it. And then we can get the JavaScript in order to put inside of our WordPress membership going to copy it and then we're going to come back to this texting area and then we're going to put in center we're going to put in our code and then we're going to put in 
the back center code. We're going to click update. And now we're going to view our membership area page. And you'll notice here now that the form is going to be the first thing that people are going to see. So you're going to want to write in some verbiage or perhaps even create a video telling people that what they'll need to do is to sign up for each month's content so that they'll get it on time and then they will be added to an email marketing list. Now what you'll need to do is you'll need to create messages on a monthly basis for people to receive. So in order to do that, you'll go to Create Autoresponder. And what will happen is that on day 30, they're going to get an email. Now you're going to have to create this message. And so you're going to create a new email for day 30. And you'll say something to the effect of get month two content. Once you have it, then you're going to go to the, you can save it actually, and then go to the next step. And then you'll come into a place where you're going to actually write your message, which you can start from scratch. Now you can put whatever you'd like to place inside of your message to your customer. The most important thing is that they get the link for the month to content. And so what we need to do now is we need to go back to our WordPress membership and get that link. So what we'll do now is go and get all of our posts. And we'll find month two. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the URL. And so what we can do here is we can actually right click this view button and copy the link address. And when we write our message, what's going to happen is we're going to make sure that at the very least, after everything else we've written, we'll deliver the link to them. And you can make it or personalize it. However you do it with your autoresponder, you'll just make sure that you've got this post so that they'll get that month's content. Now, they're going to get that on day 30. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click Next Step. And then you'll do the same thing for months 3 and months 4. So, for example, for month 3 or 60 days after, you're going to grab this link. Right, you're going to copy that link address. We will set up month four, and so each successive month, 30 days after, they're going to then get this content. Okay, so however you save it inside of your autoresponder and you go to the next step, that is how you're going to set up the drip for your autoresponder to send out the actual content. Now, one other thing that you'll want to take note of is that you are going to want to change the name of your uncategorized uh, slug, especially because you're using the permalinks in the uncategorized area. And the reason that you do this is because you don't want to make it easy for your customers to guess where your URLs are going to be before they actually get the content. Now, it's probably going to never be a never be a factor, but you do want to make sure that you have it there so that once again, your customers will only get the content that they have actually paid for. Now, if you do use pages, this is one aspect of the process that you will not have to worry about are the categories. And this is the advantage of doing that process that we just went through on pages instead of posts. Once again, it is your choice as to how you're going to execute delivering your content to your members, but you can use pages instead of posts. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now, in this video, we're going to go over the email configuration. And one of the things you want to recognize is that S2 member uses the WordPress system for sending out emails. And there are times when, depending on how your WordPress installation works, 
that you may not be sending emails out to people when they actually sign up. And so you want to verify that your emails are working. So one of the first things you're going to do in order to do that is you're going to go to your all users section and then you're going to create a user. And what you're going to do is you're going to add a new user and you're going to go ahead and fill out all the information. And you are going to fill out this information and then you want to send this information to an email address that you are already getting email for. And so you want to verify that that email is coming to the box because if it is, that means then the S2 member will use your WordPress installation, it'll send the email, and that every correspondence that your customer is supposed to get, they'll actually get. If you don't get this email, that means that your email is not working properly and that WordPress is not sending out email to your customer. And this does happen from time to time. So once you've done this process, and let's say that you verify and it does not happen, we're going to go over what you need to do in order to initiate a workaround. Now you're going to need to install a plugin that will use your WordPress installation's SMTP system. And in order to do that, you want to go to the Add New Plugin, and then you'll search for SMTP. And there are a number of plugins and there are a number of ways to do it. One way to do it is to use the Gmail SMTP or to use the SMTP that will work with your host. Now, one of the best things to do at this point is to work with your host to figure out which of these plugins will actually work best or ones that they recommend. If you don't have support, then you'll want to use the SMTP plugin that goes along with Gmail. And I'll show you how to find it. If you search using the term SMTP Gmail plugin, you'll see right here at the top that you'll get the Gmail SMTP plugin. And it's a free plugin and you can download it to your hard drive and then upload it into your WordPress installation. Okay, once you have this plugin, you'll want to just click install. And then you're going to click activate plugin. Now you're going to find the settings for this plugin and you're going to go down to Gmail SMTP and this is the point at which you'll want to work with your host and then follow the instructions inside of Gmail SMTP. The other thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that you test this email to make sure that WordPress is sending out the email to the people that are actually coming into your membership. So this is a case where you can work with your host as well as this plugin to get your test email working. And once your test email is working, then you will have a working installation of S2 member as well as WordPress when it comes to sending out email. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to be discussing how you can add on to your membership using WordPress plugins. Now you can add on to your WordPress installation to enhance your membership, and you're going to do that through the use of plugins. Now one of the ways that you can do that is you can add on a social network through the use of a plugin called BuddyPress. At the website buddypress.org, you will find that there is a place for you to download the free BuddyPress plugin and you can actually have a social network where your users will have profiles where they can interact with other people and private message them and basically interact on a social level as well as professional. And it's a little like Facebook and it's almost like having your own mini Facebook inside of your niche, inside of your own site. And so if you have a highly interactive group, this can be a fantastic way of keeping them engaged and keeping them on your site and interested in what it is that you have to offer. Now, another way that you can add on to your WordPress installation is to add a forum using BBPress. Now with BBPress, you'll go to bbpress.org and you'll be able to download the plugin. And while setting up your form is going to be a lot of work, it is fairly easy to get BBPress installed and actually work with the categories to get your form the way that you actually want it. 
and it's a full integration once you actually get it installed and you can interact with your membership or only your members. You can actually hide it from the search engine so that only the people who are going to be part of your membership are going to be able to be part of your forum. Or you can bring free users into your forum and then feed them into your membership as they find out more about it. Now you can also add a classified section onto your WordPress installation and it can be for members to make special offers to other members. And there are plugins available like WP Classifieds where you actually can create your own classified ad section of your website. You can also add on a wiki to create a reference site for your membership's topic or for your membership's niche. And there are plugins like WP Wiki that will allow you to create a wiki on your site. And again, basically what you're doing is you are giving your users the opportunity to update with you a set of circumstances that will only occur within your niche or within your site. You can also add on polling and surveys as part of your site to keep your members engaged. And there are plugins like Social Polls by Wedgies as well as WP Polls that will allow you to do that. So basically, you have a number of options available to you to add on to your membership so that you can keep readers engaged as well as to make your membership interesting. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now there are a few details that we need to finalize in order to get your customers into your membership site and we'll go through those things right now. Now one of the things is that we'll need to get buy buttons from your JBZoo product and we'll need to add them to a sales page that you create. Typically you're going to want to have your sales page on a site other than your membership site. Now you will have a version of that sales page in your membership options area, but you want to have your sales page operating separately so that the sales process can happen as well as the membership process and onboarding can happen smoothly. Now in order to move your customer through the process with ease, you're going to want to make sure that you give them instructional videos on every step of what's going to happen between their purchase and them actually getting to be part of the membership site. You want to place videos inside the checkout area of JVZoo as well as on your thank you page. You're also going to want to put a video uh, on the membership login page along with your opt-in form and once again, you are basically explaining every step of the process and what your new member can expect as they go throughout their experience. So let's go and do some of these things in the actual places where they will occur. Now we are back in the product area for JVZoo and what we're going to do is we're going to grab our buy button and you'll see here on the product bar that you can actually click this button and then you can actually go and get the buttons for your product. And what you're going to do is you're going to take this code. So if your sales page is on your WordPress site or if it's on some other site, you are going to be able to take this code and put it in the HTML section so that your button will appear. And when people click this button, they'll be taken to your JVZoo product. And we also mentioned a video inside of the product area and you are going to put that video in this area, right? And you'll notice that there's a YouTube code in there and that's where you want to put the video. And once again, all you're doing is you're guiding your customer through the process and you're showing them exactly what they can expect to happen and what they should do. And you should also spell out in the video what they should do if they don't get an email or if, they, if something doesn't happen the way it's supposed to happen, you need to tell them and show them how to go to your support area. And you will go to this membership area and you'll click edit. And then you're going to put that video right above your opt-in form. And what you'll do is you will put your center code there. You'll put in the embed code and then you'll put a back center code in there. And then what will happen is your video will be there so that you'll be instructing people exactly what they should be doing once they actually get to this page, especially because you want them to opt in so that they'll be able to get the drip content. Once you get that code in there, you're going to click update and then your video will appear there. 
Now, in addition to that, remember, you're going to have a thank you page and you also want to have a video there explaining to people what they can expect and what they should be doing to go to the next step. And so that's it for finalizing your customer flow. You are going to want to do these steps and you are going to want to get them ready so that you can begin bringing members into your S2 member membership. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to be talking about finding a theme for your membership. Now, one of the keys to people feeling good about your membership site is maintaining a very professional look to it. Now, a professional look is going to give your users the sense that they are paying not only for the quality that you're going to be delivering, but they're also going to be paying for the experience. And what this does is it makes your value tangible for your users and your members. Your membership site is going to be like the office or the house or the location where your membership is. And so you want it to give the users a great feel. Now, there are going to be pros and cons to every theme that you get. And of course, you want to try to get a theme, if you can, cost effectively, that's going to help you to accomplish those things that we're talking about, which is the professional look and giving people the sense that they are really getting something of value. Now, there are always going to be default themes. You can use them if you know how to customize them and you're willing to work with them. And you can certainly make them work for both a membership site as well as a sales page. You can also find a free theme if you use the WordPress dashboard and you look for themes that you can turn into a sales page. And again, many of these are going to require some work to get them into the form that you want them in order to accomplish your purpose. Now, here's the rule of thumb. Make sure that the theme is easy to use even if you have to pay for it. And the reason is because you want to focus your attention on getting members. You don't want to focus your attention on building the membership site. You want to be able to build your membership site quickly and then you want to get to the point of bringing members into your marketing funnel. And one way to do that is to get a theme that can easily be used for both sales pages and for membership sites. Now, you can certainly use paid themes and sales page themes, but we want to try to get those themes that we can have the dual purpose. And there are two such sites available. There might be more, but these two are reputable and they are supported and they can be used for both purposes. InstaBuilder and Optimize Press. They are both paid themes. However, they are available and can be used for both purposes. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to be talking about testing your membership in JVZoo as well as in your WordPress installation. Now before you go live, you'll want to test all of the moving parts of your membership. And you're going to start with JVZoo and PayPal. And we're going to show you how to do that here in a minute. But you're also going to want to verify that you get a member added to your user section. You're also going to want to verify that the member is going to be able to see the first month of content. So when you actually go through the testing process, make sure you use an email address that you're going to be able to check and you're going to be able to look at as if you were your own customer. You'll then want to opt into your list and make sure you get the first autoresponder email because that's going to be a good indication that you're going to get the other one in 30 days. Then. Use your new ID to try to find or access content that's not available to you. This will mean then that if you are using that new ID and you can't get to the other content or you're blocked or you can't find it for some reason, that means then that your customer will not be able to share your content without having paid for it. Now let's take a look at how you test in JVZoo. Now inside of your JVZoo installation, you're going to see a button down here at the bottom that says test purchases. You're going to click that button and then what you're going to do is to create a test purchase code. JVZoo is going to give you this link and then you're going to be able to click this link and then you're going to be able to walk through the entire process of a purchase at one penny. Now let's just click this link to see what it looks like. And you'll notice there that you've got the price at a penny you can actually put in your JVZoo account to have your product delivered and you can put in a PayPal address. 
And what's going to happen is you are now going to go through the entire process as if you were a customer. So you will be able to see what happens. And you can create that code as many times as you need to as you are testing your system. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. In conclusion, you can create a WordPress membership that is complex as you want or easy as you want, and you can use JVZoo and S2 member in order to do it. You can add social networks, blogging, and an upgraded theme, and even a forum to enhance the user's experience. You can also create it as a simple way to deliver a one-off product if you like, and of course, to deliver a recurring membership with the free plugin, you'll need to make sure to get your members to opt in so that you can use your autoresponder as a workaround. So with that, thanks, and I look forward to seeing you either in another video or in another course.